What do you think of that? I, I, that's a brilliant idea. I, I think that should keep people engaged. And look at you coming in with all the, the great ideas, and I'm just sitting here over in my filth blaming an imaginary guy for all my problems. So maybe, Well, maybe, maybe we're wrong. Maybe you haven't peaked too early. Maybe you're just about to peak. no, I doubt that. He gets one high in the air. Left field. This one's got a chance. And let's go on a cow hide. Joy ride. Sound the horn. The Railcats clear the yard. Hello, Railcats fans, and welcome back to the Railcats Talk podcast. He's Chuck Polaric. I'm Kyle Savetich. And Chuck, we finally have the Railcats 2025 schedule in the bag. Something we can finally talk about in this offseason. I'm I'm a little uh I'm I'm happy and I'm sad and I'm going to tell you why. I'm I'm happy because apparently there's a lot more listeners to this podcast than I thought there was. And I'm sad because they decided to take out my comments of, you know, hey, Lincoln's got the best field 55 years in a row. And they've said, you know what? Railcats, we're not going to let you play there. We will we will get we will get into that discussion. Um, but before we get into that discussion, I, I want to talk about Brandon's conversation. But before we get to Before that, that, before before that. we get before we get to that, I do have a personal update in life. Um, as many of you know, at the beginning of last year, I took an intern management role at the job that I'm at currently. And after that role was over, I decided I wasn't going to do it. Well, there's another opportunity and more money in the bag. And I decided to take a management role. So my schedule will be all over the place. Uh, so it's going to affect the 2025 season. But luckily, I have the know it all Chuck, not not know it all in a bad way, but like in a good way. Know it all, Chuck. Here, that's going to help with with the season. I will, I will. The 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 podcast will not go anywhere. That's and, and the writing and everything else. That the content won't go anywhere. It'll just be uh, a little bit more. It's not sporadic. I, I can probably work it in, but it's just going to be a little bit different as far as uh, the amount of games I'll be able to go to or via watch. Uh, just because there'll be some days that I, I have to close and work weekends. So it'll probably be fine. We'll work it all out and I have to do a better job at scheduling my stuff around. So I, 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 I think that all of the people out there hear you when you're saying this and we all, uh, if anything, Kyle, you're a guy that listens to the advice of the fellow Railcats fans. And so I believe that we should have a poll and you should do what the poll says. And the poll will be, don't be a manager during the season or be a manager during the season. And I think you will listen to what the fans tell you. That's what I think. You're a man of the people. You're a I, man of the people. The, the man, the man of the people, but you know, being the man of the people and people not throwing money at you is also a big, uh, okay. uh, you know, here's the, here's the thing in order to vote, you must pay $15. <laughs> okay. Uh, to the, to the, to the, the money, the four people that may vote on this, your, right. what? And I will pay those four 60 people bucks. $15. Yep, you'll get your $60. If you didn't know that four times 15 was $60, you should not be a manager. Okay. Listen, I don't do quick maps. Okay. This quick is, maps. This is your interview for the job. And you just failed. Okay. So I, I already got the job. So no matter. Congratulations on that, on having this part time stint that it will be. Right. And, and, uh, and all of that. Uh, so congratulations on that. We will work around it, but when the season when the season hits, I'm sorry, man, you will be butts in season. It will be I, what it is. Listen, and, and and to be honest, realistically, the this year was uh, the 2024 season. Uh, our week, my weekends were so booked, anyways, that I missed a lot of the games on the weekends, anyways. But, see, but here's here's nobody where, is perfect. Nobody here, is perfect. Here, here is where things can in line with this, though. You know. There's going to be some games throughout the week that I may end up closing the night before. I may be off for, and I could go to like a King County during the middle of the week or Chicago during the middle of the week. So right. in the in the long run of things, it may benefit me. Right. So it, it's just it, you know you got to play it by ear. But yeah. I'm just saying that with the promotion 
it's not going to go anywhere. We'll still have weekly podcasts. We'll still have everything that that you're used to. Just, uh, just maybe a tad bit different. Um, as far as like game updates and stuff through like Twitter and stuff, that just stuff probably won't be, um, as often as almost every game that I've been able to watch. So, give or take that. That's sure. that's nor here nor there on that one. Um, I, I know people don't care about that. So let's get into the things that people do care about. All right. So last week we had Brandon on. Uh, great interview. Yes. That was Absolutely. a lot of fun, and I, I hope that when uh, fans do see Brandon, uh, just to kind of get that personality side to him, the 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 kind hearted, humble uh, person he is, to get to know him a little bit better and, and the front office uh, staff as well. So, uh, Chuck, what are some takeaways that you had from Brandon's interview? Well, I think that the mission that I had was accomplished. Um, I didn't really, it didn't bother me if the fans know Brandon more or not, but it does bother me. I want the fans to chant his name so that he slip and slides on the carpet. <laughs> That's really all that I cared about. So I think that we've accomplished that mission. Um, but no, seriously, Brandon's a great kid, great guy, great young adult. He has peaked. I'll say that again. Hopefully he has, <laughs> but I believe that he has. Um, and a great conversation to have with him. Um, I'm not going to be the guy that spoiled, gives a spoiler alert. Um, but our conversation afterwards, where we found out what the real secret is, <laughs> you know, about Brandon came out and I was floored I'm still <laughs> thinking about it. I was still thinking about it. And so, uh, and, and then we cut out, you know, we were already recording or whatever. So, um, I want to say this, and I'll say it live. Every child that has bought their dad a number one dad t-shirt owes a royalty <laughs> to Brandon's dad. So uh, I'm going to go go ahead and be the guy that collects that because that is his. He has earned the number one dad t-shirts, mugs, everything. I am going to, on Father's Day, present him with a number one dad something or other. <laughs> Uh, because that guy is has got to be a, an amazing father. Um, so that's yeah. I'm gonna leave it at that. That's what. Yes, we guy, we will definitely that. leave it at that because that is that it is something that caught both of us off guard. We weren't expecting it, and that is not a story for us to tell. So we will right. have Brandon back on. I don't know when, but we'll have him back on. And don't worry, Chuck will have his five minutes of hounding Brandon for not telling us sooner. That's what his fun Absolutely. fact should have been. Absolutely. Now, if you remember what Brandon looks like and you're at a game and we haven't had him back on, feel free to go up to him and say, Brandon, what's the big deal? What's the secret? What's the special nugget of news? And he will tell you, and you too will drop your jaw <laughs> and then dig into your pocket and find money to buy a number one dad t-shirt to give to his dad. Yep. The one big takeaway I have, obviously, outside of the the big secret that Brandon had that we can't discuss oh. until he says something, but just the camaraderie and how close that front office really is. I mean, him talking about Taylor Campbell buying him tickets to go to Oakland to see the the A's play one of their last home games of the year. Like that's just one of those like if you're not in a good work environment, a good team. You don't see that happening. I mean, I, I've been in jobs where uh, no one wants to speak to anyone and they just want to do their job. And there's some people that will come in and, and be excited to see people. So that's one of those that I, I think the front office, the front office aspect of the Railcats is probably one of the top, if not the top of the American Association. Now we just need the play to follow that. So, um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to add something to this. Um, every year, I believe every year, the real cats have a job fair. Mm -hmm. And last year, uh, we decided to have Ethan go to the job fair. Ethan is, was 15 years old at the time, um, because his grades sucked. Um, and he was really struggling in school and it was like, you know, Hey, we have to do something. Mm -hmm. So uh, he ended up working at the pierogi stand, and now his grades are significantly better. And when I said, hey, 
you know, good job on the grades. He says, well, it's because I worked for the Railcats and they really taught me how to be responsible. So I'm going to say that not only does it have the best front office, but everybody that works there has a hand at, at doing something awesome. <laughs> so, you know, as hopefully uh, somebody will listen to this and they'll say, hey, when's that job fair? Because I know uh, a young adult that needs to get a job or would enjoy doing this or whatever. Uh, and, you know, hey, go to the job fair. Let them put you in a position. You get to show up to the games. You get to work with a great crew uh, and, and all of that. So that's yeah. that's. Brandon is a small part of that, but it, it really does show how, how awesome a, a, a business that is to work in. Yeah. And, and with that being said, uh, today, or not yet today, uh, yesterday morning, which was Monday, but by the time this releases, it's probably the next Monday. So on the 21st, the American Association released their full schedule, which that means the Railcats right. released their full schedule. Um, so let's go back to our picks and basically I said King County at home was the first week I believe I said and then you said at King County oh, yep. for the yep yeah well we were both wrong um we play Milwaukee at Milwaukee the ninth but our home stand our first home stand or opening day at Steel Yard is against Cleburne now Going back, and I remember Keith Robinson had a Robbins had a comment, and he said, "Wild guess, Cleburne Railroaders would be the first homestand," and he was correct. So you can go back to that episode, which I think it was—I can't remember which one that was. was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, it wasn't any of the player interviews. I think it was—it was the episode after the um andrew mile interview i believe yeah. Yeah. um so he he guessed that one correctly so maybe we have to come up with a special prize maybe he gets a pie chuck in the face Ooh. well <laughs> or you know i yeah. i'll take it you know i'll, here, I'll take here's, it. I'll... here's the thing this is you know we talk very little about what we're going to talk about on here i so happened to have picked up um something special for this conversation okay and what i picked up that was special for this conversation that i have for who did you say it was uh keith 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 i hope you're watching this buddy because this is what i got you for your call and this is some rail cats coins of <laughs> players that have been on the team that apparently the Railcats gave away at some time. <laughs> That's right. These are actual coins. That's awesome. And so uh, I will have these. And Keith, if you can find me, these are yours, buddy. Congratulations. Way to win the prize. That Now, now did you take a page out of Brandon's book and, and search eBay the entire week? We're not going to discuss what I <laughs> what I did not do, okay? But this Ryan, I told you to help me out, not now. Trump. Hold on a second. Hold on a second here, because I also am am flaunting something else. <laughs> He's got a... That's right. This right here is a 2007 Rail Kids. Yeah, there we go. Right there. Boom. Can you see that? That's, <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Rail Kids Championship Ring. The reason why I have this is because, well, some of us, when we have a losing season, we got to look back and say maybe we win at some point in time. This man, Boom. He, he's going to be coming in in all sorts of or, old Railcats gear oh, from out of left field out of nowhere. We're just not going to no see idea. it coming. You have no idea. This is like, <laughs> let me tell you, this is the sweetest, the sweetest thing, 2007. But here's the deal with this. If you listen to the podcast. I am going to, at some point in time, give this away. Oh, that's right. This is going to be a prize that I give away to somebody. It comes in this nice little bag mm -hmm. right there. It tells you when it was given away, right? So it's the 2000. 
seven Northern League champions, um, the Railcats, uh, DeloreJewelry.com, U.S. Steelworks, really nice ring. Uh, I'm going to give this away. I don't know why nice. I'm going to give this away yet, but this is definitely going to be something we give away here uh, probably in the off season. Okay. Um, so, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, I also have um, two other things here that I've uh, come across. One is the 2010 team yeah. cards, and one is uh, 2009. Oh, wow. Which so happens to be, and I haven't opened it up, but can you see what this says on the back? Oh, Tom Thornton, yep. Tom Thornton rookie card. It's rookie card, yeah. So, you know, hey, uh, why not? Why not? You know? I mean, so uh, these are two other cool little snazzy gifts that I have come across that I decided that I'm going to also find new homes for. So uh, what do you think of that? I, I That's a brilliant idea. I, I think that should keep people engaged. And look at you coming in with all the, the great ideas, and I'm just sitting here over in my filth blaming an imaginary guy for all my problems. So maybe well, maybe, maybe we're wrong. Maybe you haven't peaked too early. Maybe you're just about to peak. No, nah, I doubt that. But <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Uh, we got these really cool gifts, really cool Railcat swag, right? Um, a guy online actually gave me these, so I did not actually have to pay for these, okay? These are gifts that were given to me for the podcast. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, really cool. Um, I did uh, – we're going to get to – we're going to get to the schedule here in a second. Yeah, yeah. But I've been messaging you. I got you a gift for Christmas. I am going to wrap this gift up. Uh, I really got to thinking what would Kyle like and what would Ryan like? And I might have gone a little bit further to the Ryan side than the Kyle side. And the reason why is because I'm telling you, this gift is so great that your <laughs> wife is going to hate me because <laughs> she will never be able to top this gift. And I feel bad for that, but I don't. Is so it? I Go is ahead. it an old? Uh, I had when I was when I was when I was a young child. I had an old Macarena uh, monkey that I used to love and played it all the time. And my parents eventually like threw it away to hide it from me. Is it is it that is it going to be that bad or is it going to be even even greater than that? It actually might have been that, and I hate that you just ruined the surprise. <laughs> um, now I feel bad. Uh, I can't really return it because it was used, so we're kind of screwed there. But um, it, it, it's, it's going to be a great gift. Uh, so I'm going to package it up. I'm going to get it to you at some point in time. You are going to leave it packaged. Okay. And then for the Christmas episode, after I've overly hyped this thing beyond control, beyond comparison, uh, you're going to open it up. And then you're going to declare that I am the best gift giver in the whole world. Okay. There we go. All right, fine. We'll we'll go with that. We'll just announce it now that you're the best giver, anyways, just because you're I, giving all the way a bunch of free stuff. To I've got a before. ring here, which, <laughs> I mean, come on. I've got, uh, uh, who won these again? Uh, Keith did. Keith, Keith won these. I mean, come on, Keith. You cannot. These are like, come on. This is, this is a great gift to win. Uh, uh, just for responding and putting comments in on our thing. Come on now. Uh, fantastic. So well, we got we got great great gifts to give away. Um, that being said, uh, the schedule the schedule yes. Oh my uh, goodness! So so hold on before before we get into the, before you get into your spiel about the schedule. Yeah, I'll right. get it. So I uh, we start out in Milwaukee uh, on on May 9th, which is a Friday. Which this is the second year in a row, I believe, that we've started on the road. Yes, and this will and and we end the season on the first uh, of September, uh, Labor Day again, for the second time in a row, in the year. And the the one thing that I, I really irks me, and I don't know why they're doing it, but last year we didn't go to Sioux City. We played at Winnipeg twice. Right. So this year we're going to Sioux City twice. 
but we're not going to Lincoln. Link yeah, we're not going to Lincoln. Yep. I I I don't I don't understand why that is, and and maybe maybe because you you hinted towards it that maybe we complained about it and and they didn't want us seeing the the field and, and whatever the case may be, but that that's my biggest complaint. Um. We also have one double header that's scheduled um, that is on Wednesday, the 18th of June against Kane County. Uh, we don't get the 4th of July this year. Uh, we typically got that. I know the past three years we've gotten it. We didn't get it this year, uh, so we won't have the major fireworks. So they'll probably do something special, but we don't get that, which is always kind of a bummer. Um, and I don't think we get Memorial Day this year Eat. No, no, I think we do because I think we play Fargo, so mm -hmm. we do get more. So that that trend kind of stays the same, but we do lose out on the Fourth of July. Um, but I, my biggest complaint about the schedule for the Railcats, at least, is that if if why are we playing a Western Conference or Western Division team twice at their place? For the second year in a row, why can't we just go to Lincoln? I just I, the schedule that the scheduling just doesn't make any sense to me. I, I, yeah, I so I think, and you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm going to say that it's because of me making the comment about their field that they said, you know what, this is what we're going to do. We're going to show you, right? And and I'm going to hold true to that. I think that's what it was. And unless somebody can prove to me it wasn't, then that's what we're going to run with. Um. But here's here's that you you hit on the part, but I don't think that you hit on it hard enough. The part that irks me is that you could have anybody, anybody from any fan mm -hmm. from any of the teams come to the steel yard and watch our fireworks, and their mouth will drown, and they will say, "This is the best fireworks that that American Association has." Matter of fact, our fireworks are pretty darn close to Disney's fireworks. Yeah. And I've seen those probably about 25 times. Okay. So, I mean, our fireworks are fantastic. Why the hell? I use that term very rarely. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> would you not give us the 4th of July? And, and, and the part that's even funny, we play at Sioux City. Yeah. I don't even know if they do fireworks. I, I, the, the, I mean, come on. I could, I could I mean, understand. I could understand, like if it was like, okay, you guys are playing King County because at least I know they do fireworks, and right. uh, like that's just. But Sioux City, I'm like, I, not, not, not like anything against Sioux City itself, but it's just. I think that, I, I think that Sioux City's fireworks are probably much like Chicago's, where they've got a guy like with some sparklers in his hand dancing around <laughs> up on a rooftop, and they call that fireworks. Okay. And and I made that comment to some Chicago fans that came to our fireworks last year, and I kept saying, "Sorry, we don't have guys with sparklers out." There. <laughs> and the kids kept looking at me like, "Oh, our fireworks!" When they saw our fireworks, they were like, "These are the best fireworks we've ever seen." They're great. They're they're so, absolutely. It, it, people just need to scroll through like Instagram or Facebook or or X or whatever you want to call it, and, and go through like the Railcats media and when they start the fireworks because like the thing about the fireworks is most times the fireworks are outside of the stadium. Right. They're either in right for the left field, like right there. And it's, it's all on timer. It's all great. Like everything uh, you go and you're just amazed at how good the production aspect of it is. Yeah. It, 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 it's not like, Oh, we're going to send off a couple high bomb ones here and it's good to go. No, like, and you think it's the grand finale and no, it just keeps going and going. And then, then it finally gets to the end. But like, realistically when they put on those fireworks shows i i don't know they like the sponsor just must pour all of their funds into that because it's great every friday it's great every special event it's great i i look at it like this you know everybody has that that uncle bill that mm -hmm. um spends all of his retirement money on fireworks for the fourth of july right and you know we call him one arm bill because at some point in time he blew his other arm off um, and, and he lights everything at the end of the driveway, right? And you, you look up and you're like, wow, that was nice. And about three minutes later, you're done. And boy, Uncle Bill is broke. And luckily, <laughs> he still has two fingers left, right? So 
this is that on steroids. Yeah. Can I steroids when it comes to baseball? I don't know if it can. I think um, that error is over. You're fine. Okay. It, it's it's that on steroids, and you don't have to pay, you know, Uncle Bill's uh retirement account to to see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are the big boomers that you could pay a thousand dollars a pop for, and it's constant. So if I, I guess my my suggestion to the fans out there is if you have kids, take them to the fireworks, see a Friday night game, and enjoy yourself. Stick around for the fireworks. I know kids can get cranky. They can get tired. But, I mean, everybody loves the fireworks. So there you go. So, so why screw us out of the 4th of July? I, 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 and we'll, I'll play devil's advocate here. There's probably been the past three years there's been another team – that has, or, you know, half the league at least misses out on the 4th of July. So I don't know if it's one of those cases where the Railcats have had it for the past three years that they decided to rotate it because that is that is a bit of income for those teams. So we'll play devil's advocate on that one. And, and, I, and but I, still, nonetheless, I for agree. the fireworks, I, I think that should be that should be one of the American Association Awards of the year. Absolutely. Don't give me the tacos and tequila crap that they put up there. Like, it's great income money. I get it. I get it. But not everyone gets the opportunity to have a tacos and tequila event. But everyone has the opportunity. Uh, Chicago, you can kind of put parentheses around that one because of the airport. And, and Milwaukee, because their cranky old fan fans are not well, wearing fireworks. They, the fireworks. they, they got the fireworks. I would just say at the beginning of the year, they had the drone show, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But – they need to have the best fireworks show, uh, like award, right. and I, that tough, hands down would go to Gary. I don't know who do else would have because Gary would get it every time, and that's fine. Link, Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln can have right. the best field. It's fine. That's that's we'll true. have the best fireworks. Absolutely. Who, Absolutely. Who, Absolutely. who doesn't enjoy a good fireworks show? Oh, far better than a good field. Yeah. I mean, we could go you runner up in good field and and best fireworks, and, and we Lincoln. light the fireworks on the field. And yeah, that and Lincoln could be out there with their sparklers, and they wouldn't even be in top ten, you know, in a league of twelve. So whatever, I, yeah. go with it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to give right now the award for best fireworks to Gary Sasha. Yep, there we go for for this year and for every year after this, <laughs> because it just keeps getting better, and it's it's amazing all the way around. Yeah. So right. that that being said, here's here's something that I that I noticed. We play Kansas City in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. We play till Monday. And then that next day, we play Kansas City at home. That is going to suck. Oh, we do. Yeah. And and that's a a far – It's I think it's an eight-hour drive, seven-hour drive, something like that. You know, and so these guys are going to play four games against Kansas City. At Kansas City, and then have to play the next day. Like that, why? Why are you playing that Monday in Kansas City? That that that, that off. That has to be, and that's a that's a weird one because it's sandwiched in between a road stand. So, at, at, at June eighteenth is doubleheader against King County. So you're playing that doubleheader. Then you go to Chicago. Then you come. You are off that Monday, the twenty third. And then you play King County at home. Then you go to Kansas City for four games. You're on there for four games. Right. And then you play Kansas City at home for three right games. After that. Now look yeah. at Kansas City. Do you have Kansas City schedule? I don't have Kansas City schedule. No, I just have Kansas home. City goes to Lincoln, plays three games, then goes back to Kansas City to play Gary. Then goes from from uh Kansas City to Gary to play. Gary, and then turns around and goes back to Kansas City to play Lincoln. They also get no time off. I and and that's this is the crazy thing about the schedule. I'm just looking at the because typically on years past, it, it you're typically looking at um the seven in a row at all. Yeah, seven, seven this, away. This, yeah, you're looking at that, and and this year, you know, you you have uh, there's a lot of. Like home and home here, so you have the you have the King Count or the the Kansas City one, but then you have the Lake Country. We play we play at home versus Lake Country. Then we play four games. Uh, this is in July. 
we play Sunday at home against Lake Country, and then we play four games right after that, 14th to the 17th at Lake Country. Yeah. Um, and then in August, we play Chicago at home, and then that Friday, we go back to Chicago. Yeah. Like, there's a lot, and, and I'm fine with, like, a home-and-home home situation if it's Chicago, if it's, like, country. Uh, even, no. So here's, well, I like country uh, a little bit further, but I, I would say even, like, King County or um, well, Chicago, I, that's fine. No, no, because here's the thing. These, these are the games that matter. I don't want to face Chicago and then face Chicago and then face Chicago and then face Chicago again and we're done. These are know, games I, that should yeah, be I, I, out because they matter. And and look at the end of our season. None of those games are going to matter. Well, I mean, well, you so you at the, that last week you, you were playing at Kane County. Right. And then Friday that the the Friday to that Monday we play Lincoln. Okay, I get that. Like I was gonna, I was gonna bring that up. The I would rather see a front loaded schedule against the West and the first half of the year, right? And a heavy East yeah. on the back end of the year because that you're you're right. That's when the games matter. That's what's gonna be the intense matchups. Not, but, not only I, that, I, you're still trying to figure I, what's realistic here. Realistic is these guys show up at the beginning of the month. They they practice for a week. They have two, three, maybe four. Typically, I think it's three scrimmage games, and then they're live, right? And so you're still trying to figure out your team. Well, and that's how everybody's gelling together. So play against the other division, yeah, so that you can get your crap together and get the people that you need, fill in those gaps, and then slaughter it, slug it out with your own division. But they don't do that. We've got we're facing guys in our division. We play Kane County. Three times out of the four before the All Star, yeah. Then what? We play Chicago the second half. I think that we play Chicago one time and then we play them three times at the end. Yeah. I, that being said, still, I, 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 I just well, but I mean, you put it in this perspective: is okay. You're at you play at Milwaukee, then you travel down to Cleburne to play those six games down there, and if. You know, if the the Railcats struggle, or no, we don't go to Cleveland. Cleveland no, comes to us, that. yeah. But if the Railcats struggle like they have in the past years, you're you're looking at a massive hole to dig right yourself off. out of right right off. off the bat, and you don't even have that time to like. You're not even going down like a half game. You're going down full games right then and there. Yeah. So, and, and and granted, you can have a whole different roster. So, like, it's going to be very hard to be like, yeah, we can win against this team, this team, and this team. Well, guess what? There haven't been any signings, so we don't know who the heck we can win against. Even if we do have signings, we don't know who. You you, you don't. You, it's, it's so hard to predict that that portion of the schedule. But, again, at the end of the year, I don't want to face a West team. I want to face an East team because what happens if, uh, say, if it comes down to making the playoffs and it's, us versus like country, right? Or us versus Milwaukee. I would rather that be the last four games of the season than only making up half the ground. Like you can either make or break it in that last month. And when you're like, oh nope, you get to face the uh you're gonna face Link. the West. You get to face the West team. And if the other teams that you're trying to compete against are playing each other, well get they get a full game advance ahead of you. So you're the you so I just I granted, I'm not a schedule maker. I don't know how it works. They probably, they, I know they have events, they have other stuff that goes on, but from a fan perspective, I would rather see more competitive teams at the end of the year in my own division than yeah. teams in the West. Like that's just how it should be. I, I don't think you should ever. I really don't think the end of the year, maybe at the beginning of August, but you should not see a West team in there. So so here's here's what I think. I think that there should be an app. I don't know if there is already. And if anybody hears this, sorry, pet pending. Okay. There should be an app where a baseball team or a sports team, a sports league, could put in their teams, where their teams are located, what uh what days they can't play, what the requirements are to have off days. And then the software should go through and tell you, hey, 
this needs to be a a, a back end loaded end of the season loaded thing to face each other blah 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 you're going to do this that that way you don't have guys traveling from from uh Kansas City to Lincoln back to Kansas City to Gary back to Kansas City and all of that with no time off right it's mm-hmm. not fair to them and and you can't sit there and tell me that it's because of this or because of that. No, there's no reason for us to face Sioux City twice and and not face Lincoln. It's the same distance, right? Yeah. It, it's not adding that much. So you you could have done a better job. This is the second year in a row that they've screwed up with this kind of nonsense. And I'm going to call out Schwab on this, dude. Figure out who's making your schedule. Find somebody else that can do it. I'm sure this guy, the person that's making the schedule is better off at something else. Well, I, I I know that they had a new guy last year, and it's probably the same guy this year that did it. The years prior find was a different guy. Else. Find somebody else. I, I and I, and you're right. You know what? They could probably already have a system, and they probably throw it in there, and it and it does it all for itself. They probably someone probably has something like that, and this could I this could I this could. Ended it. This could come down to uh, years past success. I mean, realistically, you're taking the the two worst teams from last year and you're putting them at the last games of the year. Maybe. But that, that would be something that I would see like in Major League Baseball because you the, the, the trend itself – you can you can kind of guess. Okay, these two are are probably not going to be it at the end of the year, so we'll just throw them in in there. You would, the, you would say it's football because football I know does that, where it's different. If you're in third place in the league, you face the third place team of the other. Of yeah, the other I, I, I can. But, see, but. The, but like I said, you get a roster. You know, you can look at the past year and say, well, this team has had success, blah blah, blah this many years in a row, blah blah, blah this and that. But you can in, you can have an entire roster flip over, and you can go from last to first. And so it, it, at that point, I you I just I just it doesn't make any sense to me. This no. scheduling doesn't make any sense to me. Now here's a good thing. The past two years we faced Kansas City right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Since I came up with the idea that I offered to give to the Railcats to say, hey, let's have a Negro League baseball jersey uh auction um we're facing them in the middle of the season now so why not now now it's a possibility before it was the argument was well you know we play them early in the season it might not work out no we're playing them later in the season now yeah I'm trying. so to... that's a possibility so maybe this is kind of a blessing but um the, the, what i would if 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 they were going to do if, if this was going to be something that they were going to do consistent every year. I would like to see them play Kansas City on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for that purpose of having – you would get more fans there. Yeah. But this – it's in the middle of the week this year. But nonetheless – I mean, it's right before the 4th of July, but nonetheless, I, I – they have time to plan this. It's not like oh, – yeah. the schedule came out way in advance. They have plenty of time – the the amount of time that they've planned for this and them giving the All Star uh, game so early on that they did that they did this year makes for scheduling things a lot better. On like not not the Kansas City but the Milwaukee one where they waited to like halfway through the season before the All Star break they announced where it was going to go. I was like, what what kind of BS is that? But right. that's beside the point. Nor here nor there on that one. Um, I just think they need to find tweak these guys and we're nitpicking probably because we have nothing better to talk about so this is get the the full brunt of our conversation i and, said and- last year i said listen last year come on now the the schedule person this is not this is not their their life skill that they should be basing a career off of so they they need to go maybe they maybe they're supposed to be more detailed oriented in the medical field or something you know, this is something that we can't risk taking chances on. Medical field, sure, go ahead. But this is something that needs to be perfect. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, but, I mean, we don't – you don't even have to overcomplicate it. it. It seems like they've overcomplicated this. This is what this – this schedule looks like 
they overcomplicated it. Like, right. let's just let's just Take throw it a really hard bunch of and, and and to me, I like I get it. I understand that Mondays are taken up for off days because it's it's independent baseball. Um, the, the money, the travel, things like that. So you're not going to really have a bunch of off days during the you know other days of the week. But if you're going to make a schedule complicated. Give me different days off in the middle of the week. So not the, not nonetheless that I don't have to, you know, give me like a random win or Thursday off, right? Your random Thursday off, but you have other teams playing so I can watch other teams play. Right. You know, it's like you can throw the schedule and make it a little oh, bit different. And, and one of the one of the things that we had last year that I think that a lot of people enjoyed was their $15 wristband for the hot dogs and, and popcorn and pop or whatever it was. Right? Yeah, the all you can All eat, Mondays. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many Monday games did we get to play this year that we're at home? Two. You sure? Yes. It is May twenty sixth against Fargo, and our, our September first against Lincoln. There you go. Two. Yeah. So two days we get to have that special at the beginning of the season and at the end of the season. We play. We play four games on Monday, and two of them are away in two room at home. Yeah. I mean, come on, that sucks. Yeah, I, like I said, I from a promotions side of things for the Railcats, I would say I, you would probably want more Monday games than you would probably want. I, I would say Tuesday games. I know that your your three dollar tacos and your five dollar margaritas like that that brings in people, but the all you can eat aspect of it is a little bit different. I don't think you would. I don't think you want to get rid of Wednesdays, Thursdays, or Thursday, Thursday. You don't want to get rid of that. And Fridays for sure. You know, you obviously the weekend you want all of that. So I don't know if it's one of those that if they're concerned about the all you can eat aspect of it, maybe uh, every other homestand, you know, like on a Tuesday, you switch it from Taco Tuesdays to all you can eat Tuesdays or whatever the case may be. But again, I don't know how much money, you know, it's a promotion. And, and when you do promotions, you're not really expecting to make money off of it like that. So I don't really know if it's oh, one of those they, where they, they make money off of it. They, they're, I mean, it, it's, it's, it brings people in, they're spending money on other stuff. Basically it's just, it's just a way to get people in the seats. To get yeah. Them in. But you know, like year before last we had Wednesday bingo, which mm -hmm. was fantastic. I loved Wednesday bingo. I, I really enjoyed myself uh, uh, trying to, Every time I think it was every time we got a hit, they yeah. rattled a number or something, right? Now this this year they didn't do that. Maybe that's why we didn't get so many hits. But you know, I, I mean it. It, it was and, cool, right? and, and and don't worry. We'll, we with with the schedule being out, we can predict now, like what promotions are going to come out, what promotions we want to see. All the, right. So well, we got we got a schedule thinking, to work with. I'm I'm thinking that we you know I already sent you know when I had a conversation with Anthony, uh, he said hey in October send me an email to remind me about the Negro League jerseys, which I did. Um, I failed to remind him about the bobblehead idea that we had. <laughs> right, so got to get on that. I'm going to say oh and by the way remember bobblehead that we talked about. Um, now I'm going to tell him mystery bobblehead night. Hey guys, wink wink. Their idea, not ours. We're not going to take credit for it. Um, but uh, uh, I, I'm going to reach out and say, hey, who's going to be doing your pro your promotions this year? Can we talk to them? Can we have them on? Yeah. Because uh, I would love to know what goes into coming up with these ideas. And maybe it's, maybe it's more complicated than we know. Um, I know that uh, – uh, different companies sponsor different nights for the giveaways. And sometimes they have companies that uh, sponsor things and then next year's they don't sponsor or something comes up and they can sponsor. So, um, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's one of those things, but uh, uh, we do need to start talking about promotions. Yep. That, that will be a topic of conversation since now we do have a schedule to look at. Um not to get kind of off topic, but I do want to talk about there is some updates as far as for the American Association uh, schedule overall. Um, the the games start on the uh, 8th 
you have King count or you have Sioux city that plays at King County. And then you have Winnipeg that plays at Cleburne on that Thursday. So May 8th, everyone is in action May 9th. Um, All-star game is the 21st to the 22nd in Fargo. Then September 3rd starts the playoffs. Uh, again, top four teams from each division get in the big change. Well, the first round is still the same. Uh, best of three the best are the the divisional round or the semifinals however you want to put it has been extended to the best of five and the finals are still best of five i like the best of five aspect for the uh divisional rounds or the semifinals however you want to spin that i i would i don't think it's going to happen but i would really like to see a best of seven for the finals and that's just that's just coming from a traditionalist of hockey is all seven round or all playoff rounds are seven MLB baseball the the, the world uh, World Series is seven so I like I would like to see seven but I don't really know if it's you're, you're pushing it a little bit further into uh September when you know high school football really kicks off um college football kicks off in the NFL so like, I don't know if you really want to you're necessarily trying to compete with that. Oh, and you got kids going back to school and stuff like that. And, and yeah, at that part, you know, as some people have learned this year, that it's once the season's over with, it's harder to get people into the stadium, even if it's for the playoffs. Um, do you have any thoughts uh, on anything with the American Association schedule in general? Uh, that's you know, um, I I I like it. I like giving these guys a couple extra games possibly to play. Um, I anything can happen in in the best of three. I think you're really working towards getting who's the better team in the best of five. Um, same as with you know if we did a best of seven in the championship, you're really uh, having to utilize a deeper aspect of that roster. Um, that you don't see in a three game series, mm -hmm. you know, and so, uh, you know, pitching your best three, best three starters, take a, a day off, two days off, then you're pitching your best three starters again, at least with the best of seven, you're, you're really having to get into that rotation. Yeah. Don't get to change things up and, and pitch the same, you know, uh, uh, I think, yeah, it was, um, Kane County didn't use a whole handful of their relief pitchers uh, this in the, in the playoffs because they yeah. didn't have to, yeah. you know? And, and so you're kind of showing the best rounded team versus just the guys that are stacked with a few pitchers. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I would be curious to see, you know, with the best of best of five, how they're going to format it out. Cause I think they did, what um two and three two and three i would like to see maybe two two and one but again with uh, they, yeah they the, won't the, do the, the traveling and stuff like that just that eats into it um or uh maybe a uh a, maybe you reverse it a little bit maybe you do one two two i don't i, I don't know i don't know how they would i guess it still spins it the other way around I just don't know how it feels sometimes to be like if you're the home team, you know, in, in that aspect of you, you get the home field advantage and, and you go down to nothing, basically like what happened to Winnipeg. Like right. you don't have a chance to get that. You don't have that chance at home, that first initial home start. Yeah. So to me that I, I, I get it why they do it that way, but that's why I would also like to see a best of seven because then you could split it up differently. And you could have maybe a, a different, um, you know, you could do a two, two, and three. Yeah. Instead of the two, two, and three. So at least you could start it at home and then you go to the road and then you finish it out for the home, home side of it. Yeah. There's, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to say that they probably have the same guy that does the schedules as the guy that's in charge of figuring out what the, and what may I, look like. And I think they did for the three, the best of three was it was just one, one, and one. No, it's one and two. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, one and two. Yeah, one and two. I I would rather I would rather that just be all three at home. Eh. It, it, oh, it, but but okay. But here's the thing: you have to take into account revenue, right? So these guys, yeah, you get to have a playoff game. You get to have fans show up. You get to make a big deal out of it. You get to give away the playoff T-shirts or whatever it is. You know, you get to you get to make a thing out of it. And and you get yeah. the opportunity you get to do it at both locations. So I I'm not going to take that away from the the fans. Uh, no, you know. I, I guess I guess we've been just so deprived of it that I'm just like eh, whatever, just just play it at home. We'll, I we'll... mean, you can say that, but uh, <laughs> I've got a 2007 Gary Railcats championship ring here. So you might have been deprived, but this guy's wearing some, some <laughs> that gold. Uh, High class steel, I think, is what it is. It says U.S. steel on the side. Look, at that. It look it, I mean, it, it looks Boom. really nice. So, look at this. rail cats. Boom. I'm jealous. Whoever designed this definitely uh, gets some points. It definitely did not make the uh, American Association schedule. Right. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Listen, no, it's... because if, if the guy who made the schedule would have made this ring, uh, first of all, the hole would have been a square, okay? It wouldn't have been round, right? He would have made it outrageously complex, and then you couldn't even – it would have looked more like a, a thimble than a square than a ring because you wouldn't be able to put your finger all the way through it and be like, oh, well, it's just so complex. You really wouldn't understand. And that's – there you it, go. It, it was like that. What a handful of years ago, they tried to reinvent the wheel. Um, like when the actual wheel was like it was like square, but it was like kind of curved a little bit. I, I would have to look it up. Um, I, they put it on skateboards or something like that. I would I would have to look it up, and if I do find it, I'll just put it up here. But it's one of those. I, it's like that's what the design is like. You're reinventing the wheel. Like just leave it how it is. It's fine. Well, so I did a little research, and I believe that the guy that did that is the guy that makes the schedule uh -huh. now. So there, there could be some overlap there. The moral of the story is if if something's good, don't change it. Right. And if you do change it, and I'm going to give you a hard time about it. I should be nice. I'm going to find out that really the league doesn't have any money. And this is somebody's little grandma that is the one that's making the schedule in between her knitting shows. Right and and that I am ridiculing her, and it's not going to be nice. So now, I now, apologize you, if it's an old lady. You 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 talk about you know the the league may not have money, but quote from Joshua Schaub saying after another year of growth in terms of attendance and revenue across the league, we are looking forward to another tremendous schedule. For our fans and clubs in 2025. So if you're talking about no money, uh, they're where talking is, about revenue where is, raises. So where, where did you come across that at? Uh, it was in my email from the American Association. Okay. Uh, As I wonder if it's on Twitter, my response to that is going to be, "Okay, when are you going to release? When are you going to release the schedule? Because <laughs> the one I see is crap." <laughs> Listen, we we yes, we are hounding on on the schedule, but we just wanted to see it better. That's all it is. It's, I think it's, so. I'm fairly confident that Shab uh, would never come on this podcast just because of how much crap I talk. Listen, Umpire sucks. Scheduling sucks. Video oh, footage sucks. That they're always one. You know the the. All we, that we will i i we can we can have another discussion about that because i i, I different because we like so we got the entire off season to talk about a bunch of random so this is just this is our ideas because there, there's a couple that irritate me i, I know some of it is, is based on the stadium or where they're located at but sometimes like the streams it, it, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent that okay. we'll keep let we'll let keep out, out of this episode therapy. this is therapy let it out let let, it we out. got we got play we, we're here to talk we Talked about the schedule, so there's there's plenty of off season to talk about because I mean, obviously we hope, knock on wood, we should get some player signings here shortly, um, so we'll have some players to talk about, but it'll, it'll be a slow progression. I I, I think November first, 
Hey, and it's going to be during the, the time that I have to do overnights at work. So they're going to do all this stuff. I'm going to be sleeping and I'm going to wake up and everyone's like, oh my God, they signed a bunch of players. I'm like, well, I'm now currently at work. I can't do anything about it. So I'll be probably late That's to the party on that one. that's unfortunate. Yeah, I know. So, It, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Now, I've got these two packs of cards here, right? 2010, 2009. Pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely pretty cool. Uh, uh, Keith, I've got your your coins here, right? I think these are like really cool, actually. Yeah, those those are really that's Like it says, uh, hundred career RBIs with the Real Cats for Jose Yepes. Uh, 2005, 2007, right? I mean, some cool stuff on yeah. these. These are a cool gift, right? Um, then I've got the ring. I've got the ring. To me, fantastic gift, Yep. right? The gift I got you is better than all of these put together, okay? So just, just put that in mind. Better than all of those put together. Now, now before before we get to the final thought, what are what's going to be the criteria for the coins, the cards and the ring to give out? Or Oh, have you are thought about that? already given the coins away. The coins Or not belong. the coin. Uh, yeah, not the coins. I I meant the ring. Cards The and the the, ring. yeah the the cards in the ring. Is this something we're gonna have to discuss offline, or do you already have a criteria ready for it? Uh, I I am. I, I mean, this is this is really a pride and joy here. This is something that I don't think um, is easy to come by. I don't think that you can find this just about anywhere. Okay, No, I don't. I don't. so this ring is is something that I am going to. Uh, I'm really. We're going to have to discuss. Okay. This is going to have to be something that is going to have to be a big thing, right? And and the cards. Hey, I, I I mean these cards, you know, they're they're awesome. Uh, the fact that you've got a a Tom Thornton rookie card on the back here, Mm -hmm. and we've got a a, a Rusty and Rascal card. Oh, the app. Over this one, which I have it on good authority, the Rascal uh, is not dead. Um, that Rascal might have gone off to college, just like the guy who's clues. So that might be why he's gone. Um, so, you know, limited, not easy to come by, not nearly as, as hard as that ring. But um, we're, we're going to figure it out. This is, it might be something along the lines of we're going to have a discussion about something. We're going to throw out a keyword and then. Well, I, 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 this is, this is going to, I, this is going to sh sound a little, little uh, typical, but I'm going to lay the base criteria out right now. So one, you have to be either on, on YouTube or on Spotify have to be subscribed to the podcast. Yeah. Two, has have to follow the Railcast Talk either on Facebook or X or Instagram. Yep. A and four, or the other one, is you Three. have to follow Okay. three. The, yeah, see, math, not my strong suit. You Right. either have to follow you either have to follow Chuck or myself on our personal accounts. Okay. So, yeah, a little bit of self-promotion among everything else. But that way we know that the people that are getting this are true Real Cats fans, not the Real Cats fans of the podcast, All right, but real I don't have, fans I of don't the Real have Cats. anybody that I know of following me on on X. Okay, so that being said, you always post the podcast and stuff, and Yes. and it always has my my tag on there. Okay, so right now I'm saying I have this ring in my hand. It it is a size seven, but you know it works on the pinky just fine. It looks good. Okay, um, I have this ring in my hand. Follow me. If you are interested, There you go. follow me on Twitter if you are interested. And then I'll know, hey, people are interested in this. We can have some fun with it. Uh, if I only get one person that follows me and his name is Kyle, then it's going to be like, hey, I've already followed, uh, so. <laughs> there's only one guy that is interested and there's nothing I can do. If a magic Ryan winds up showing up and, and follow me, I'll know that this is a scam. And I'll be like, hey, I get it. Right. 
So that being said, uh, we we had some fun. We we got some stuff to make this oh, winter yeah. fun. That's yeah. what I did. I got us some stuff to make this winter fun. So with that being said, Chuck, do you have any final thoughts for this week? I I would like to apologize in advance that I am going to be giving you the best gift and your wife is going to hate you and well hate me and in turn your ra- your relationship is going to be totally different moving forward so I apologize in advance <laughs> um but I have to do it okay well and I want you to tell her that I want you to tell her if you haven't already that I am getting you the best gift that you probably I I would say like maybe your parents giving you the gift of life, but that'd probably be underneath this gift, actually, to be honest with you. So I'm giving you the best gift. She's going to have a hard time beating this. Well, I guess we'll have to wait until Christmas time to figure out what that is. Um, yeah. But for now, I know. It's killing Chuck. me. For now, he's Chuck. I'm Kyle. This is the Railcast Talk Podcast. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, rest of your evening, whenever you're watching this. And go, go Cats. Cats. The O2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Wrap this one up in green and white.